also guess local news or big news, depending on how you look at it. Yeah. Vale and Nate Basin broke up after 20 years. It's like a divorce almost. It's basically a divorce. Yeah. Uh, a Basin will not be renewing their agreement to be on the Epic Pass for the 2020 season. Mm hmm. And the 2019 2020 season. So I've been an A Basin Pass holder for four years now. I've had one in the past. Basically, it was my place to run to anytime Vale kicked me out. <laughs> um, now that I just don't, I don't, I, I won't deal with Vale. I'm over it. I, I just don't care. I've been A Basin and I, I'm A Basin icon this year, last year, last two years. Before that, I was A Basin and Copper. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> it's really weird to think for the 15 years that I've lived here that the Basin's been on the Epic. Because I can remember when I moved here, it was like, You'd go ride the basin in the preseason, Keystone would open, you go to Keystone, Breck, and everything. You'd ride them out, then the postseason, you'd go back to the basin, and you know, you really weren't there much of the midseason. Uh, it's kind of a big thing in the terms that no one's ever really said no to Vale. Yeah. And A Basin was just like, goodbye. <laughs> yeah. Anybody, yeah, anytime Vale's like, hey, you want to do something together? Or, hey, we're going to buy you. You just do it. And A Basin's really the first. I mean, when was the last time Vale lost a resort? They lost some partnerships here and there. Partnerships, but, yeah, but I mean, losing an actual resort... Not that they owned Day Basin, but it was such a... They were such an integral partner and been a partner for so long. It's right, kind of and it made the... the echelon of resorts that were owned. It also made the Epic Pass better in some regards because you got that preseason, postseason... Right. ...that would go with it... Uh, you know, it, it made for that pass to have one of the longest seasons in North America with multiple resorts. Mm -hmm. And now it's gone, but this year at the start of the season, we saw Keystone and Breckenridge push up opening. Yep. Which, thankfully, we had snow for that. Yeah, I know. They're and right, now right, Breck is extending through till Memorial, Memorial Day weekend? Through Memorial Day, the 27th of May, I think, is the final day. I'd have to double check yeah. that, but it's at the end of May. And they're going to try to push Breck to, be, to have one of the longest seasons in North America. Mm -hmm. uh, the weird thing is what they're keeping open for Breckenridge. It's peak 7, up to the T-bar. T-bar up to Imperial, so the Imperial chair will be running, but not Peak 8. They're going to try to get Peak 8 open for summer operations. Yeah. And Peak 8 would be the stronger one to have open. Absolutely. And keep the park going, because then you're going to get the park kids. But right now, it, it's a power play, because they're losing a basin, and they're going to have to compete against Icon with Mammoth. Mm -hmm. Mammoth will probably go to Labor Day, if they really want to. They, yeah, they, Mammoth could... If they worked at it and tried, they could probably just be open all year. Uh, realistically, this year, yes. Yeah. Uh, but, I, like, there's there's definitely been years where, like, I, just, I remember it was a, a couple years ago that they literally only closed so they could do maintenance. Yeah. They closed for, like, two weeks so they could do some maintenance on some stuff and, <clears throat> and then open back up. Yeah. Um, it, it's really... So, from my perspective as an A-Basin pass holder... I welcome this so much because I hate the epic pass crowd. They ruin everything. They're the worst. Like, parking has been so horrendous this year. Just the experience at A-Basin. Like, normally I could roll up midweek, be a little later, you know, get up there, ride for four hours, and come home. And now I have to fight to get a parking spot in the upper lot. Yeah. Like, and pre and post season are dead. Yeah. Like, I mean, they've been dead for three or four years now. But I, I just remember the year that I went to go to. I mean, it's, it happened numerous times where, like, you know, we get snow anywhere close to a weekend and it's post season. And, you know, I got to go to A Basin because that's what I'm trained to do at this point when it's post season. And you can't even get there. And there, I remember one year they were parking people at Keystone and shuttling them from Keystone up to A Basin. Yeah. That year, I just said, nope, went home, grabbed my backpack, and hiked up Keystone. And then the following year, it was basically the same thing, where I tried to drive there, saw that they were parking people in the turnoffs, and I just turned around and went for a run. Like, yeah. I... Postseason is dead. It used to be, like, super fun for, like, everybody that lived up here, or if you just knew, like, A-Basin was still open, and it was still good. 
and you still didn't have to deal with lines really and it was just kind of mellow it was kind of like a it almost felt like a secret like 10 years ago and now it's just blown up well it's and, everyone just goes up there and they're yeah. not even like the funny thing is he says how bad it is to get there if you get there, you realize there's no one on the mountain. They're all drunk in the parking lot. Right. It's They're just, just a party, party. Thing now. Yeah. It's yeah. just. Oh, the mountain's still not busy. It's just getting there or is just a nightmare. Yeah. It's, this year's been horrendous. I mean, with the. Well, we've gotten so much snow. We've yeah. had so many avalanches. But still, the other day, I drove over there. I It was like 8 o'clock in the morning. They wouldn't even be open for another 45 minutes to an hour. Like, mm-hmm. I was going to get breakfast up there. I got basically to the last area where there was a U-turn spot in front of Keystone, and it had gone bumper to bumper gridlock because someone had done something stupid. So I whipped a UE and went to Copper, and I've got a parking pass at Copper, so I don't have to worry about parking close to the resort and not being out with the peasants and then having to take the shuttle in. Mm-hmm. And I parked. I was on the chairlift within five minutes, and there was no one at Copper that day. Yeah, And it's... You can see you can see how their staff is over there and how they treat people. Like, it's funny. Uh, I was getting yelled at the other day by a lifty because I was going too fast. Uh, dude, it's a fucking flat. Of course I'm going fast. I know how much speed I need to make it to the chairlift. And he's screaming at me. I was like, I'm an A-base and season pass holder. And he just stopped. <laughs> he just stopped yelling. He was just like, okay, have a good day. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, my boss at... Uh, the liquor store he went up there for his first time and had some friends in town and you know he went where they told him to park him and the girl started yelling at him telling him he was parking wrong and he's like okay well I'll move it it's not a big deal and she's like well you just you typical epic scum she called him epic scum then she spit on his car lovely uh, great first impression for someone that probably would have bought a pass next year yeah like great awesome and I've seen them just how they treat some people up there. And I was like, I get it. That place is past occupancy for getting people there. It's like when you're on the mountain, it's not no. really that crowded. Uh, I mean, I'm still making laps on Pally where I can just ride down, get on the chair, go right back up. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of people are just riding the beeves because it's the new terrain. Right. And I'm fine. <laughs> next year they won't be there. I'll go explore next year. Yeah, right? I haven't even been over there yet. And I haven't even bothered. Yeah. That's... Trying to decide if I buy you a pass there next year or not. Well, I was thinking about that because now I can get uh, I can get Ashley a pass, an epic, because uh, of common law. So uh, I'm, I'm thinking maybe we talk her into doing a basin passes next year because she likes a basin, and that gets us preseason, postseason, unlimited, not having to pay ten bucks each. And then if you know during whatever we, busy season and we don't want to go all the way to beaver creek to get away from the crowds and we just go to a basin because it's not going to be good well see i was debating getting you an icon too yeah either way like i, I think i want to try and convince her to get uh a basin pass at least just so we can go to a basin because even a minute i'm gonna miss a basin oh, i like a basin a lot i yeah, love a basin yeah i don't know uh my thing is it's funny to see everyone's been spreading rumors they're like they're going icon they're gonna do this they're gonna do that and a basin's over here like I think we're gonna just take a year off and not be in a relationship with anyone and yeah. see what happens and from a monetary standpoint it would be really interesting it, it makes sense because then they can see did we actually need that traffic right i mean you look at resorts like powder mountain in utah that limits their day tickets to 1500 and their season pass how many season passes they sell and, and they're fine and they're fine and the mountain is not tracked out no. and everyone is awesome up there like the attitude of the people is like not yeah. stressed i got vibed out once <laughs> by someone that worked there uh yeah actually really it turns out he was a uh he a lifty yeah he like it was uh i was out there with uh the arbor crew and there was sort of a bunch of us ripping around and i don't know why he singled me out but he singled me out to yell at me and tell me i was going too fast and he just paid attention to what i was doing and I was like, all right, weird old skier guy. And then, like, two laps later, we're over on some other part of the mountain, and he's working one of the lifts. And I was like, oh, this is awkward. <laughs> That's okay. Was I, was, I was screwing with their mountain ambassadors on the cats. Yeah. Like, so you take the cat up, and we'd be out in some, like, some valley cutting back to a chairlift to get back to the cat. And I'd roll up to him, and it was a good day. And I'd be like, excuse me, sir, do you know where the nearest blockbuster is? I have some VHS tapes I need to return. You should see the look on their face. They are so completely lost. Because you just roll up all serious, like, excuse me, sir, I need to know where the nearest Blockbuster is. I have to return some VHSs. And they're like, 
the snow's good. <laughs> yes, it is, but that's not what I asked. And so I spent I spent most of the day just doing that to people because sure, sure. why not? That's also my new thing that I do when Mountain Safety or an ambassador yells at me for doing something. Excuse me, do you know where the nearest blockbuster is? I have to return some VHS tapes. I need to return some tapes. I gotta go return some tapes. I gotta return some tapes. Well, you know, I'm always hoping that someone catches the American Psycho reference in that, but they don't. And no. It's funny. Uh, I think next year, though, at the Basin, it's not going to be as crowded. No. I don't and know. I think the snow will hold up better after a storm there. I yep. think that's going to be, like, my new powder palace to go to. Although Copper's been really good this year. Mm-hmm. But don't go to Copper. It's crowded. Copper's terrible. Don't go to Copper. It's flat. It's it flat, flat as shit. It's super flat. You have to ride T-bars everywhere. Yeah. Single person T-bars. They pull you by your nuts. Literally, you have to attach your nuts to them. Don't go to copper. Don't go to copper. No one go to copper. Copper's the worst. Their chairs hit the ground. Yes, their chairs hit the ground. That's actually a true fact. But actually, that is. That did, that the, their load ramps are really fast and aggressive. Unload ramps are the fastest and aggressive. Oh, aggressive. no, I'm talking about flyer mid-lift. <laughs> when it stops. And there's a photo... On Facebook, of people's imprints of their skis. Oh yeah, no, yeah. American flyer, so American flyer will bounce about thirty feet. Yeah, you will die. I forgot about that. So don't go to copper. Don't go to copper. Don't, do don't go to copper. It's the worst. Just do don't it. go. To, you know what? Don't even come to Colorado. You should go to Southern California. Bear Mountain is Bear Mountain fantastic. is the best. Bear, Bear, Bear has all your needs. You know where else? You know where else is really, really good. And everyone should go to. Look out, mountain in Idaho. Everyone should just go to Idaho. Yep, yep. Just just go to Idaho. Colorado's terrible. I go to Idaho. I hear Trollhagen's amazing. <laughs> they got it. They put in a new gondola, a high-speed gondola. It gets you to the top of that 300 vertical super fast. Everyone should go to Trollhagen. 10 or 12 seconds. 10 to 12 seconds. But, uh, no, the bigger thing is, I think... Parking congestion will totally be alleviated. Yeah. Uh, they don't have anywhere to add parking. They can't. Yeah. They they physically can't. Yeah. There there's just, you know, this has been the like the one year that I can remember actually having to park in the way out lot, which is like the upper upper lot. I've had to where, do it a couple times where I've shown up at like eleven o'clock on a Saturday. Yeah. But, yeah, for the most part, like, only in the last like three years have I ever had to do that. Anytime before that, like, you show up and you're like, oh, man, I got to park in the overflow lot. And, like, that was a bummer. And yeah. it's, it's still not even that far away. Like, No, because you can, if you're smart, if you park it up by the one banked corner, mm-hmm. then you just run across the highway and hope you don't get hit. But yeah. then you're on the runs and you can ride back and then run across the highway and hope you don't get hit. Yeah, I've done, I've done multiple gear reviews by parking over there, by running back to the car. It's easy. I do, I do love their one guy that's always at the gate turning people away and I'll be like yo man I got like 20 boards I gotta ride today can I get a spot down here I sort of got he's high as a kite because he's like uh uh then he looks in the back sure <laughs> he just does not even want to yeah. argue with it if you like if you actually come up to those dudes with any sort of semblance of like I belong here sure. then they don't give a shit and they're gonna let you in yeah. I've never actually been turned away by one of those guys if I roll my window down my personal favorite is yeah, my friends rented a beach spot. I don't know, Jones or Smith or something like that. Yep. I, I don't know. We got we got three tubs of stuff. We got to get back to the Jones guy down there. He, he just looked in my truck and went, oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, right. It's freaking amazing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm actually looking forward to ABs and not being a part of Epic anymore. But it makes me wonder if more resorts make A-Basin better. will stand up to Vail and say, we don't want your partnership. Like... I think, I don't know, I, I, I would love, I'd like to talk to some of the people, you know, I'd like to talk to people that are locals at Whistler, or locals at Stratton, to see what sort of effect it's had. Like, I think the biggest thing with A-Basin is I don't think they really had an issue with it necessarily being a bunch of people coming to A-Basin. It was just the fact that they couldn't take the parking issues anymore. No, yeah, no, 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 no. It literally, what the wording is, is we want a better guest experience for our guests. Epic okay, people enough. really aren't their guests because yeah. it's like they're only getting a small percentage like, so I, I, guess, I guess the better comparison is going to be, like, Telluride. Telluride? What happens with Telluride over the next five years is going to be interesting. Yeah, uh, so I don't know if you've seen any of the articles about the backlash from, like, the Icon Pass, too. Like, Jackson locals are bitching, uh, Big Sky I've locals are bitching. Yeah. And, and people are like, no, you need to be nice to these people. And I'm over here, like, if they're being an idiot, choose. You, it's your choice to be mean or not to them. That's how, yeah. I, that's how I deal with people around here. If they're being a fucking idiot... I will make sure that their experience sucks. Mm-hmm. If they're being cool, I'll be like, yeah, sure, anytime, come on back to our neighborhood. But if you're 
a fucking jackass. It's like the kid that littered. This kid literally was littering and I called him out for it, so he decided to punch me in the face. I sent him to the hospital. I knocked out his front teeth. I don't feel bad about it. Fuck him. He was littering. I called him out. If he'd just been like, oh, I'm sorry, man, and I'd be like, garbage can's right there. You're fine. Just pick it up. You know? That's, uh, it's so stupid. Like, when you see, see how people treat people around here, especially working, um, in customer service. Although I'm, I'm not really customers. I'm more like customer disservice. Like, like bad guy. Did, did I tell you about bad guy? Okay. So at the liquor store, we don't do plastic bags for anything you purchase. It's brown paper bags, no handles. That way, you know, no one sees what you're getting, but it's, or boxes. It's the liquor store. Most people buy in bulk from us anyways. So I'm in the back in the cooler and this guy buys two six packs. Our bags will fit three six packs on top of each other. There's no handles, but you can carry it with one arm. So the guy I'm working with, Colin, is like, oh, do you, do you want a bag or a box? And the guy's like, I'll take a bag. So Colin pulls out a bag and the guy's like, I need something with handles. I have to walk a mile. Okay, well, sir, this is all we have. This is all we have had since I started there, since before I started there. This is all they have, we've had. So he's screaming at Colin. Colin's like, there's a guy in the back that can help you. I have no clue. <laughs> and you know how I am when I get blindsided. I don't like it. So I'm coming out of the beer cooler, and the guy's like, are you the manager? Those are his exact words. Are you the manager? Turn around and look at him. No, but can I help you? And he goes, don't you think it's obscene that you have... And he just starts laying into me about bags. Mind you, this was literally the busiest weekend we've had to the point that the police were thinking of... Sh it was the uh, right after Snow Sculpture weekend. Yeah. So he was here for that uh, weekend. So like, the police were contemplating shutting the road into town down. It was Be nuts. Uh, people who have lived here 40 years have said they'd never seen that many people. So this guy is just berating me about bags. And I look at him and I was like... And he just says, Do you... Th how do you expect me to carry two six-packs? I just paid $26 for two six-packs. How do you expect me to carry two six-packs? I look down at his hands. I look back up at his face. I look down at his hands, and I go, you look like an able-bodied man with two functioning hands. I'd hope with those. That was not the answer he wanted. So he starts berating me again. I was like, hang on a minute. Walk in the back. I give him. A, I pull out a paper bag. I walk to the, up to him, and I hand it. I go, there you go. There's a fucking paper bag for you, buddy. Well, this is, how do you expect me to carry it? With your hands. I've already answered this question. And he goes, he's just laying into me about this. Just He was looking for a fight. That's that's it. At this point, he's getting up in my face, and I take a step back to get away from him. And he gets closer, and I take two steps back, and he takes three. And he's getting his chest in my face. And I'm like, you need to leave now. I'm not going to deal with this. And he goes, I want to see what you're going to do to me. And I was like, you don't want this. I'll win. I will pick you up and I will throw you out the fucking door. I have done this before. I will do it again. I was like, I don't have time for your fucking bullshit. He's like, oh, now you're going to swear at me? And I was like, yeah, you look like a man. You look like you've heard the word fuck before. <laughs> don't be afraid. Get the fuck out of my store. Like, I'm not dealing with this. Like, you're, you're being unreasonable. I'm trying to... I've given you multiple options. Mind you, he has a plastic bag with a toothbrush in it. And he's making it out like he can't put a six-pack in that bag. Of course not. Of course not. No. Heaven forbid. Now, for those of you that don't know, the town of Breckenridge has a 10-cent bag fee. For all bags, regardless. It's just what we do. It's our way of trying to cut down on waste and be environmentally friendly. It's stupid. I don't... Whatever. I could go into a whole tangent on this. But this guy proceeds to go next door, find a manager, scream at them, scream at a couple cashiers. One of the cashiers is like, fine, I'll give you a bag. Gives him a plastic bag, and he's like, go back in there. And without skipping a beat, he looks at him and goes, I've been in war, man. i fought people. That guy over there is going to kill me. I can't go in there. I can't. I think this guy might have been tweaking on some bad cocaine. I don't really know. A lot of people do bad cocaine up here. It's really just baby laxatives and meth. So, um, But, you know, he was just looking for a fight. So he comes back in with the guy. And the guy loads him up. And we're like, okay, you can leave now. And he proceeds to start screaming at us some more. And I was like... What part of get the fuck out didn't you understand? So I just pushed him out the door. It was just like a fuck. But this this is something that like, I've been seeing a rise in what I call altitude rage. And it's just people dealing with lines and it's overcrowded and the price of everything is higher and stuff. And A Basin has always been the Summit County affordable option, in my opinion. Right. It's, it, 
You know, I remember a year I bought a spring pass for two hundred and thirty one dollars. I rode eighty nine days on that thing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean that is, that's that's pretty damn cheap. Mm -hmm. And um you know, like this is what you deal with though, is this and I think the basin had seen I mean, I've seen their employees be treated like shit. Then again, I mean, you've seen me literally scream at one that almost blew my knee out. Yeah. But that, that was that was their stupidity. Yes, it was. Um, but it, generally, you know, I try to be nice to them and everything, even though they're minimum wage snow carnies. But you see people, like, I've seen people have full-blown meltdowns in the lift line, like throwing skis at ticket scanners and everything, just doing this. And I think this is... This is the fact of what it is, is like, even though we're supposed to be, supposedly there's a diminishment on the amount of people, skier visits and stuff, I think it's just in concentrated areas that yeah. more people are coming. Like, we've, we've consistently, like our county consistently has gone up between 10 and 20% year over year for the last seven years. Right. And the fact that the snow sculpture weekend... We didn't just hit occupancy, we crushed occupancy, then we mm -hmm. destroyed occupancy, then we annihilated anything, any form of semblance of occupancy. And when we people, burned it, and then we peed on it. And then, and then we let more people come in and stomp on the ashes. Yeah. That, when they're parking three deep on Main Street, yeah. and just leaving their cars and there's no one to enforce it, right. like, the police couldn't do any. If there had been an ambulance emergency, someone would have died. Mm -hmm. There's no way to get anywhere. In that, and I think that's what A Basin is looking at. Is they're like, is this better for our quality? And it goes back to that whole thing, like I mentioned about Powder Mountain and limited lift tickets. And I think it makes sense. I mean, they're gonna sell, they'll probably sell less season passes, mm -hmm. and they'll probably have the same amount of sales of day tickets, and people will have a better experience. Yeah. And what do you what are you more likely to do if you have a better experience? Tell people it was a good experience or tell people it was a bad experience? You're more likely to tell people you had a bad experience. Mm -hmm. So they won't go. But if people you People that are pissed are louder. Yeah. This is very true. And I also don't believe that the customer is always right. No. The customer's usually wrong. You just have to inform them that they're wrong and then break it to them in a gentle manner. Yeah. Unless you're me, and then you just say you're wrong and walk away. <laughs> But, you know, like dealing with bad guy, that's not the first time I've dealt with someone like that. And I see more people like that just being entitled and angry and pissed off. And I get why he was pissed off. He probably spent the whole weekend and fucking lined everything. You know, when every restaurant in town has a two to three hour wait, mm -hmm. every restaurant, I'm talking Subway. Yeah. When Subway has a line, you know there's an issue. Mm -hmm. So, it just, it, it makes no sense to me.